Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the World Series of Board Gaming's 2023 Ticket to Ride Final and giving you all the highlights from that exciting game commented live over on the Dice Tower by David Waybright of Man vs. Meeple and Ashton Wu of Shelfside. This was a quick game for a final. Ticket to Ride plays pretty quickly anyway, but what I want to do is focus on some of the highlights and focus on some of the moves, but if you didn't see the final, I want to go to the final table situation right now. We can see the table here, and I want you to predict and see who has won. Just take a minute to pause it and look at the screen and look and see what's happened, and I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit about the players. Green has four tickets in hand. Green has four tickets in hand. This is the final game state. All of the trains have been played. The game is over. Green has four tickets in hand. Blue has two tickets in hand. Yellow has two tickets in hand. And red has three tickets. So with that knowledge in mind, who do you think has come out on top? These scores are pretty much the scores that they have gotten from placing trains. And what is really exciting to, to look at in retrospect is how close these ranges are. But all of these players know the value of these six length routes. We can see blue has cut across here, has cut across the top with a couple long six, six routes. And that's why blue is a little bit ahead. But I also believe that the longest train is going to go to yellow. So yellow is about two points behind blue. So knowing what you know about the tickets, who do you think pulls out on top? We have yellow William Spear, blue John Talbot, green Lucas Litzinger, and red Ross Updike. Now if you know the final situation, you will know that it ends up being William Spear who manages to take it. Both green and red were unable to complete some of their big tickets. And that's where we can see some of the pivotal moments of, uh, of these Ticket to Ride players. We see Blue identified in the game that Green is making this big run. If Green connects right here, that's the game. I think Green takes it right there. This block, which forces Green to do a huge diversion, and then the speed of the game, which enables Green not to get the cards needed to make that final route, that final connection. You see Green is left with three trains, and unfortunately Green cannot manage to place those in time. I think that would have swayed everything in Green's favor, but this key block from Blue actually enables to take him out of the race and make it a two-horse race. Red also was trying to compete and commit to these extra routes. And I think what's fascinating about this game uh, is to note the tempo of it. These players are playing very quickly, both in terms of time of game, but also in terms of the pace of the game. Often in Ticket to Ride, you'll see the beginning of the game goes fairly similarly. People sit and they draw cards and they draw cards and they continue to draw cards. But we can see that it is our eventual winner that is the person who pulls the trigger first, who locks in their routes and who starts creating this monumental route across the country. Oftentimes, too, if you're able to get across the country in a few key points, Los Angeles, San Francisco, making it all over to sort of Toronto or Nashville area, you've got a nice big stretch of land and then you can draw additional tickets and sort of put little offshoots on that. And it's, I find it very fun to sort of walk through and see the opening moves and see how people respond. We see as soon as a double track is laid, it is immediately gobbled up in those early stages of the game. People are holding back, they're waiting to see where people play. And as soon as somebody breaks that that agreement, then all hell breaks loose and people start laying track down. It's a really solid start, a really key route to claim, especially when you're going for this double route, is from Los Angeles to El Paso and prioritizing the tickets and drawing those tickets. And you can see as I'm gonna scroll through on, if you just scroll through on the YouTube video, you can see the how much turnover there is from the market of players knowing the colors that they want and identifying and going for them. This is also a really key move for yellow as well. El Paso has been taken. And so rather than going up, yellow wants to get up to Denver. They want to create a connection point to Denver and then connect across. But instead of going the route of Oklahoma City to Denver to, to scoop up a little bit more points, they opt to go the route back, doubling back over to Phoenix and up to Denver. It actually nets them three less points, but by doing this, and you can see afterwards, immediately there's some there's a play of red on the, on the board connecting to LA and Phoenix, knowing the value of Los Angeles and knowing that there are some huge routes connecting to Los Angeles, they're making it very inconvenient for red to get there by doing a blocking 
a, a little blocking situation that doesn't really harm them that much. I guess we could think that going to Oklahoma City and then to Denver might be a little bit better in terms of, of points and in terms of having uh, a little bit of some offshoots to get to other positions. But they know that they're going to cut across to Kansas City or Omaha later in the, in the game anyway. And by placing that route, they have the potential to really, really screw up Red's plans, which they eventually do. It, it takes them a long time to, to go around and that efficiency really cuts in. And so we have sort of yellow taking out red and blue taking out green like we talked about. And then it comes down to their points and to their tickets. Uh, yellow knowing that they have a few more tickets. The points being about the same since they make up for that longest route. A really, really close game as things evolve. What's interesting is blue does not place for a very long time. We see red, yellow, and green putting things on the board. And blue knows that their tickets aren't in contention. And so they're able to kind of keep on scooping up the, the routes and to move forward in their plan of getting these big, long routes. While everybody else is fighting over the other little bits, their intention is to scoop up the cards so that they can make a huge push later on down the line, which they absolutely do. And they end up being the top point scorer. It's just that their tickets aren't as strong as the big, larger tickets. We can even see at the end of the game, Blue made a decision to lay some track because they were worried if they had taken more tickets, they wouldn't have been able to complete them right off the bat as their last move. And I think it was the right call. They didn't quite have the infrastructure in play to luck in, or not luck in, but to, to probability in, so to speak over a bunch of the other tickets that could have been in the area. Yellow knew from the start with that long route, if they can lock down that long route and really accelerate the tempo of the game, they would have a chance. Now, strangely, it is blue that is pushing that tempo of the game. It's almost that blue could have held on a little bit longer. Oh, sorry. And I said before that this was a yellow spot. Yellow had already claimed that, but, but green had a chance to connect still down there with those two. Just came up one turn short. And I think that is why blue decided to trigger the end of the game when they did is because they could see that that green, if they connected, green was going to just steamroll the competition with such a strong, strong connection. And they were able to stop that with the tempo. But yeah, it's really interesting to me that there's so many things that you kind of have to take care of blocking the person who's next to you. Because you have to assume the person who goes before you will block you and thus the circle of life happens. And we see that happening a lot in this game. Blocking is almost never beneficial if it doesn't directly impact your own routes. But I think it's the strength of that cross country ticket that William knows that he he's locked in. If he gets those two tickets, he's potentially golden just to scoop up points along the way. And he absolutely implements that. Ticket Ride's a very fun game to watch in reverse and to watch just sort of scrolling through and seeing the map build and seeing how the map builds over time and seeing the scores shift, especially when you know uh, some of the tickets that have happened with the benefit of hindsight. But I think key moments, key moments here is when green gets blocked out from connecting Toronto to Pittsburgh. Uh, I think a key moment here for Red's game is when Yellow locks down this Phoenix to El Paso. Uh, and then I think people letting Yellow get across the country is what helps Yellow. William Spear become our 2023 champion. There's his picture right there. Let's put it up. But here's the amazing thing about Ticket to Ride. It is in everybody's house. It is a game that so many board gamers know how to play. It's a game that, you know what, if you beat 12 people, you can earn yourself a ring just like William. That's all it takes. There's like a there's a maximum of four rounds at WSBG that you have to make your way through to earn yourself that $3,000 ring, to earn yourself a spot in the semifinals where you can compete for the grand title of world's best all-around board gamer and that $25,000 prize. And if not, hey, we still have a whole bunch of fun things happening at WSBGs, multiple ways to win. Just by entering, you're gonna get a swag bag filled with stuff. There'll be games in there, there'll be promos in there. We have individual promos for a number of games in the lineup. If you are a fan of any of the games in the 16, you owe it to yourself to book a trip to come to the World Series of Board Gaming and see how you do. Because let me tell you, the only way you can't win is if you don't try. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, according to Michael Scott. So I look forward to seeing you all shoot your shot 
become the next Ticket to Ride championship. I want to see you there with your ring, with bragging rights for eternity. And I want you to have the best board gaming week of your year. Thanks so much for watching. I'm really enjoying looking at all of these 2023 highlights as we make our way to the 2024 World Series of Board Gaming. My name is Chris George, and from all of us here at WSBG, what are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game. Get your tickets at WSBGVegas.com. I'll see you in the next one.